When folk get along with each other, it's good and it's pleasant. That word behold means, hey, check this out. When mom and daddy get along with each other, it's good and pleasant for the whole house. Hey, look, when brother and sister get along with each other, it's good and it's pleasant. Hey, look at this. When, 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 when white folk and black folk and Latinos can work together, it's good and it's pleasant. Hey, check this out. When Republicans and Democrats and liberals can pull together, it's good and it's pleasant. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Behold how good and how pleasant. See, some things is good, but not pleasant. Discipline is good, but it's not pleasant. That child getting a spanking is good for that child, but it's not pleasant. Oh, castor oil. Mama knew it was good for you, but it wasn't pleasant. You see, some things is good, but not pleasant. And then some things is pleasant, but not good. Smoking weed, I heard. I heard. That's what the... I heard. It's pleasant, but it ain't good juice and Hennessy I heard Jack Daniel I heard is pleasant but it's not good fornication is pleasant but it's not good adultery may be pleasant but it's not good but the psalmist is saying there's something morally good and emotionally pleasant about folk working together in unity Suppose two families invited you to their house on the same day for dinner. One family that invited you, they were fractured. They couldn't get along with each other. And if you went over there, you wouldn't know what to expect at the lunch table. But then the other family that invited you was loving and kind and friendly. And you knew if you went over there, dinner time would be a joy. Which invitation are you going to accept? I'm going over here where they get along with each other, where I know dinner time will be a joy. And then we have to ask ourselves, even as a church, why aren't people coming to God's table? And we tell them, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Why aren't they coming to the table? Maybe it's because sometimes they see we're not getting along at the table. And wherever there is dissension, it messes up folks' appetite even for the word of God. You and your wife can both be hungry and you tell your wife, baby, I'm going to take you to Roof Chris. And she says, oh, yes. And she gets in the car and on the way to Roof Chris, y'all get in an argument. The next thing that Negro says is, I ain't hungry. Take me back home. Because where there is dissension, it messes up your appetite. Point number one, unity is well-pleasing to God and to others. Matter of fact, Jesus said this in, in, in Matthew 5 and 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. One way people know you are a child of God is you are about peace. And one reason why a lot of people don't think you're a child of God is because you seem to be about disturbing the peace rather than having peace. We have too many peace breakers and not enough peacemakers. Ask your neighbor, what are you about? 